Good morning. Today we will have a look at how you can use render passes and stencil layers directly in Unreal Engine 5. We'll have a look at how to set up layers and what to be aware of when using them. So let's have a look. So here we are in Unreal Engine 5. This is a simple scene I've set up of some ships floating in the ocean. We want to render this with render passes. So how do we set this up? Well, firstly, we'll need layers. In the same way that we use layers in Photoshop, we need to separate each mesh into its own different layer that we want to render separate. If you don't have the Levels tab, then simply head over to the Window menu, scroll down and you'll find Layers here. Here you can see all of the layers I have currently have set up in my project. To assign a mesh to a new layer, it's very easy. Just select the mesh in the viewport and it will automatically select the mesh in the outliner. Then when it's selected, it's just simply dragging the mesh down to the layers panel and it will create a new layer. The default name is layer one. If you double press it quickly, it will select all the meshes that are assigned to this layer. I will rename this and call this ship B. And we'll do the same with the last one, which we'll drag in and rename to ship C. So now we have all of the meshes assigned to a different layer. This also applies to actors such as the sky, the lights, etc. So here's the first caveat to look out for. I don't really know why, but you can't have an underscore in the layer name. The underscore and what follows will be simply ignored. I don't really know why, but make sure you don't have any underscores in your layer name. So make sure that you name your layers with just one word, uh, preferably. Now that we've assigned all of the actors and meshes to the layers that we want to render, you can preview the layers by pressing the eye icon here and this will toggle the layer on and off so you can see all of the meshes I've assigned to the layer Viborg castle here. If you want to see all of the actors in a layer simply go down and press see all actors and here you'll find a list of all the actors assigned to this specific layer. You can then with the X icon remove an actor if you don't want it in the layer anymore. Also worth noting is that you can also only have one actor assigned to one layer. It's not possible to assign one actor to multiple layers. And I'll just preview my layers here by toggling the visibility on and off to make sure that everything is working correctly. Then I'll just toggle down the folders to make it more neat. It's time to render, so head over to Window, Cinematics, Movie Render Queue. If you don't have the Movie Render Queue activated, you can simply head over to the Settings, and then Plugins, and then search for Movie. And now the Movie Render Queue plugin will appear. It will probably prompt you to restart, but once you've restarted, you should now have the Movie Render Queue, where you'll find the more advanced render settings. And then delete the JPEG sequence. So the first thing you need to activate here is the accumulator includes alpha. When you enable this, not only will the render time increase, but you'll also need to activate one particular setting under project settings. So with the project settings window open, simply search alpha and under rendering you will see enable alpha channel support in pros processing and make sure that you change it to linear color space only the other setting is meant to be used for broadcast and not for linear compositing so make sure that you choose linear color space only and not the other one then you will be prompted to restart the software once again so make sure that you save and then restart now it's time to hit render once again so head over to Window, Movie Render Queue, select your comp and open up the settings. As you can see, this has been unchecked, so make sure that you check the accumulator includes alpha once again. If you wish, you could disable the multi-sample effects. And this will temporarily disable the motion blur, the depth of field, etc. So you don't have to go in and disable these one by one. You can simply hit this button and it will temporarily override the post process. Down here you'll find the movie render queue 
world depth map and the movie render queue motion vector map. However, the thing I mentioned earlier with Unreal ignoring the underscore, these materials have an underscore. That's why when you render this, the layers with the C depth and the vector motion will just simply be called movie render queue, which is very confusing. That's why we are going to create instances of these materials instead and use them instead of these master materials. And as you can see, we have all of the movie render queue materials here. Then you want to rename it to something more logical, something like world depth or C depth or depth pass, whatever works for you. But I'll go with uh, world depth for this one. As you can see to the right, I've already made one called C depth. I've already created an instance called simply motion vectors. This way we can avoid the underscore issue. First off, we have the render main pass. This is just a beauty pass that you can use to easily look at your uh, combined layers. I'd suggest leaving this on for easy preview. Below, you'll find the add default layer. And this is if you don't have all actors assigned to their own layers. So let's say, for example, that you only want to stencil out just one ship. You can use the default layer for the background layer instead of assigning actors and making sure that everything is in the layer list. Below that, you will find actor layers and data layers. Data layers you can just simply ignore. We won't be using these. Under actor layers, you want to assign as many array elements as you have layers. So for me example, I have eight layers in this project. So I'll assign eight array elements to my render. And then under none, select each layer that you want to include in your render. After this is completed, simply add your normal render settings. So I'll add the anti-aliasing and select the temporal to 8. And then select override. You can of course go with a higher quality setting, but this is just for speed and demonstrational purposes. For file format, you want to use EXR. This file format supports multiple layers, which JPEG and PNG doesn't. For compression, you can choose DWAA, which is a lossy compression, which has a good image quality to file size ratio. And just for fun, I'm going to add the reflections pass on just the ship C here. Then select an output size. And I'm going to save it under a shot 1B. And then do a version 1. And I'll output it here. Under format strings, you can change this to camera name. And I'll change this to camera name underscore frame number. We'll actually do camera name underscore version underscore frame number. I'll just change this into version. Mm, perfect. This usually takes a while as the accumulator includes the alpha channel. So be patient and uh, go and grab like a protein bar or something like that when you're waiting. Now on to some more fun Unreal issues which I found. So if your mesh in your layer has Nanite enabled, this mesh will not render correctly. So uh, just, just to demonstrate, we'll head over to the Mover Render Queue with this mesh with Nanite enabled. And we'll do just a version 2 folder here, just to show then let it render. You can already see that something weird is going on here. This is because the render doesn't include the nanite meshes. Not really sure why and not really sure if this is going to be fixed in an update. 
but as of 5.1, which I'm using today, this is currently an issue. So first off, here we have the normal render with no nanite meshes. If we then go in and press Ctrl L, we can preview each layer here. And as you can see, we also have the world depth uh, map and the uh, vector motion map. And as you can see, these aren't real render layers. These are stencil layers. So what Unreal will do is that it will create a stencil or a mask layer but you won't actually have the full layer rendered, which you might be used to if you're working with like Blender or Maya or Houdini. Next up is the render with the nanite meshes. And if we now go and have a look at the ship layer, I think it was the ship C, we can see that this layer is empty because the mesh had nanite enabled. Again, not really sure why, it's very annoying, but uh, yeah. So you can see the other layers are working correctly, but the ship C with the nanite meshes doesn't. Opening up your compositor of choice, I'm going to use Natron today. Select the EXR file that you got from Unreal, hook it up to the viewer. We'll quickly do a shuffle node and select the uh, ocean and then do a new shuffle node, Control c hook this up and then do the background sky. The important thing to be aware of when combining these layers in your compositor is that the layers have to be combined using an plus operation and not an over operation. As you can see, the default here in Natron is over uh, A over B. But as you can see, a weird, strange line appears between the layers. So to get rid of this, you simply have to select the merge node and then change the operation from over to plus instead. And you will see that it instantly improves the blending between the layers. And as you can see here, that's how you set up render passes and stencil layers in Unreal Engine 5, as well as troubleshooting some issues that might occur, such as the underscore and the nanite issues currently as of 5.1. This might be improved in the future versions, but as of now, these are the workarounds that you need to be aware of. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.